Listen, Street Fighter might be as old as the hills, and Soul Calibur might have swords bigger than Jules' ego, but ask me on any day of the week, and I'll tell you that Tekken is the mother business. I've always loved how simple it is to pick up and play, even for someone who's never touched a one-on-one -on -one fighter before. In fact, to quote the Spice Girls, if you want to be my lover, you have got to give. Tekken is too easy, but that's the way it is. So, now that you're presumably an instant convert, sit back and relax while I walk you through all the fighters that deserve your newfound attention. I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com, and here are the 12 greatest Tekken characters of all time. Number 12, True Ogre. I extended this list to 12 simply to fit in the not quite top 10 material monster that is True Ogre. What a badass. He's got horns, he's got wings, he breathes fire, and his entire right arm is a massive snake that seems to sort of writhe around independently to the rest of his body. Weird. Imagine how inconvenient that must be. I do a lot of things with my right arm, and if the whole thing was a giant sentient viper, I don't know what I'd do. No wonder he's so uptight. Number 11, Craig Marduk. Again, he's no top tenor, but Craig Marduk is over 2 meters tall, weighs more than 370 pounds, he's missing a piece of his ear, and he has a move called Around the World, which goes a bit like... <laughs> Sure, he's a total asshole, and he killed the original Armor King in a bar brawl, but Jesus. Any towering mass of abs who starts a fight by wandering into shot and going, I'll break your face, gets a shout out from me, no questions asked. Number 10, Horang. I'll be honest, I've never quite got the hype surrounding Horang that somehow lands him in the top 5 spot in most Tekken lists. However, I do appreciate his hypnotic as all hell Taekwondo moveset and the combo capabilities it gives you. Leaping around from foot to foot and juggling your opponent in a haze of blue particle effects is not just unbelievable unbelievably satisfying, but actually easy to pick up. Horang with his beautiful mop of red hair is one hell of a fighter, and the closest you're gonna get to an actual ginger ninja. Number 9, Kuma. Kuma the bear is what Tekken is all about. He might be a huge hulking beast that could tear you limb from limb, but his ludicrous behaviour juxtaposes wonderfully with his presumed ferocity. Yes, he has a throw that entails literally gnawing your face off, but he also dances in one of his victory poses, he's head over heels in love with Ling Shayu's panda, and his Tekken 4 arcade ending is a supercut of him stamping legal documents with prize-winning campness. He could rip your arm out of the socket, but look how happy he makes his master. Bear of the decade. Number 8. Martial Law. Law is, put simply, a flurry of fists and legs. Few Tekken characters move this fast, which is in line with the obvious Bruce Lee homage going on, but better yet, Law is more than just a tricksy fighter. Dude's got personality. He's been fooling around with his son Forrest and friend Paul Phoenix for years, getting into all manner of hijinks. One particularly memorable moment was his Tekken 4 ending, in which he got into a brawl at his own Chinese restaurant. Crazy old Marshall. In fact, you might say he's a Law unto himself. That's... I, I can't. Let, let, should we just end the video here? Number 7, Heihachi. Seriously though, how does his hair stay up like that? He spends all day electrocuting people with his fists and throwing his family into volcanoes and ending his arcade runs under the caption, Thereafter the world came to know an age of darkness, and still his hair stays up. Never mind the Devil Gene storyline, this Barnet truly defies science. Number 6, King. As far as I know, there's never been a satisfactory explanation for why either of the two King Luchadors, or indeed the two incarnations of Armor King, roar like actual Jaguars despite being men in masks. In the later games, they even have growled conversations in their ending cutscenes with handy subtitles beneath. It's weird. But does this really matter? The fact is that King has looked badass ever since the very first Tekken, and- whoa. Okay, never mind. The fact is that King has looked badass ever since the third Tekken, and what with the seemingly endless multi-throw chain attacks he's able to pull off, this list would surely be incomplete without him. Number 5, Devil. Unpopular opinion alert, Kazuya and Jin are both boring and overrated, and their only third dimension is the Devil Gene. Deal with it, dweebs. Jin is a whiny little bitch who probably spends his Friday night styling his hair alone and feeling sorry for himself, and Kazuya is just a miserable 40-something with daddy issues and pink eye. The Tekken one manual literally lists his hobby as collecting sneakers. The devil form of Kazuya, on the other hand, can fly, shoot lasers from his head, and pull off purple like a champ. When Devil Jin gets out of his emo phase, we'll think about adding him to the list. Number 4, Jack. The first four Jacks from the first three games, i.e. the ones whose bodies were actually in proportion and didn't make them look like shaved gorillas, have always had an air of King Kong about them. With the strength of ten men, but a Laura love to give, this is one tin man who was born with 
the heart. Aww. The gunjack ending in Tekken 3 literally has him carrying a girl around on his shoulder and saving her from a space laser, so if that's not comparable with the actions of a giant gorilla, then I don't know what is. Also, P-Jack in Tekken 1 has the most awesome, ridiculous, f**k-off-sized drill attached to his arm, because this is what Namco decided he looked like in prototype form. I guess the drill got ditched in the focus group or something. Number 3, Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu is a space ninja with a laser sword. He does cool moves, he wears crazy costumes, he has swanky victory poses. Yoshimitsu is a space ninja with a laser sword. He's number 3, Yoshimitsu. Number 2, Brian Fury. The total f***ing maniac store called and they're all out of Brian. <laughs> It's one hell of a toss-up as to whose is actually better, but Brian Fury's signature crazy laugh is at least on par with Dr. Neo Cortex. <laughs> if not better, and that is absolutely saying something. With an absolutely brutal moveset, an encapsulating backstory, and a terrifying personality, Brian Fury was an instant favourite for me and so many when he appeared out of the blue in Tekken 3. He pulls turrets off tanks and throws them at soldiers, and you can never take that away from him. And number one, Paul Phoenix. Okay, Keihachi. Paul's hair does things that an army of scientists couldn't begin to fathom, and his fists, god, his fists are a force of f***ing nature. I was so in awe of Paul Phoenix as a kid, particularly the Tekken 3 iteration, that I wanted to grow up, get a job, and spend my very first pay packet on biking leathers, skull and crossbone iron-on transfers, and an industrial pallet of hair lacquer. Paul can knock off two-thirds of your health bar in a single punch. His particle effect is a blazing cloud of fire. The official canon says he went undefeated through the entire third tournament, beating the crap out of Kuma, an actual grizzly bear, and even taking down the final boss, Ogre. The official canon. He should have won. He didn't win. It was a steal. Paul Phoenix is the toughest of the tough, brimming with attitude and personality, and I still secretly want to be him. I just can't afford the leathers. And that's our list. Did we miss anyone out? Tell us about it in the comments below, or just cut out the middleman and post some Jin Kazama fan art here on my Twitter, you bunch of saddos. He's a goth wuss, and you know it. Also, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. I'm Peter from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.